understand the, the ethical argument. So you're saying your argument is it's wrong to misrepresent the booking of these assets uh, because one has a fiduciary obligation to the citizens of the state and the citizens of the state take precedence over your employer when it comes to this to <coughs> rep 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 representing oneself or representing these yeah. assets. Yeah, and that's basically... And why? Why? It, it, it might sound silly to have to say why in your mind, but why does, why does the state take precedence? Well, well the last one says that whatever the majority in our U.S. society believes about morality is typically correct. Our society does not believe it is right for someone to deploy the state of tax revenue. Okay. Let me, let, me, let me push that, though. For about 400 years, uh, our society as a whole, the majority of the way it was reflected in our laws, thought it was perfectly okay for a long time to enslave people of African descent and then to deny them the right to vote in federal and state elections through all kinds of means. So help me understand the limits of that. Are you really, you're, so you're arguing it's really based on the conventions of the state and the conventions of the state set what's right and what's wrong and your, your client was merely following the conventions of the state which sets morality and therefore that, that's where you want, you want to rest? I want to rest with, uh, with within a loyal agency once an employer asks an employee to commit anything that is not legal or is not within set standards within our society, then loyal agency um, is affected. Can you help me understand that going along with that principle that you just uh where you now have the belief system is different, okay? Your client's belief system no longer lines up with the company's belief system. When does he or she have to leave? My client was brought to BMI in a situation where he could not just leave because he would have been harmed financially. It was BMI that gave him the assurances before he accepted the job that he would have job permanency and retirement <coughs> rights with BMI. Okay. So what we're saying is you have ethics go up to a point, which is with the belief system, but then financial impact trumps the belief system or trumps the ethics. So he would stay in a job, even though he's ethically compromised, he would still stay in that job because of the financial impact. Even he though he was ethically compromised, he tried to work with his employer to make things right. When he was sent to a re remote location, in order not to witness tax returns being filed incorrectly, he came back, he sought a copy of the tax return, and from an ethical standpoint, he tried to work with his employer. He tried to be lawyer, loyal to his employer. He, he went as far one. as trying to get the taxes that were levied against BMI reduced. He's a he did he's everything in his power to do what he wants to do. Okay, okay. Hey, okay. we we, no, we, we he isn't. Okay, he's, all right. he's, he's invading on our negative rights at this point. Got it. Like not the good, just start teaching budget tomorrow. Got it. Feel like it. Got it. Okay, <laughs> council, step down. Council, step back up. Um, I want to um, I want to ask you a question. Yes, sir. You went after McGarrity, you hired McGarrity. Yes. Um, once McGarrity said that um, what you want me to do is immoral, I wanna, and so I want to quit. Question. 
What action would you have taken against McGarry? If he quit? Yep. Nothing. You would have, besides the fact that he would have breached his contract, you would have taken no action. Let him go. You would have let him go. Yes. You want this court to believe that? Yes. Okay, you can step down. Let's let's move on to Marl Blake. Um, let's talk. Let's the the experts say that you know people should be held morally responsible if they could have. Uh, if they knew the action was wrong, and if they knew it could have pre um, prevented the action from taking.